Hi everybody, Chuck Cazetto here with Penmet Parks. We want to say thank you to our partners at Harbor Wild Watch for, for providing such great online content during this time. I want to remind everybody to stay safe, happy, and healthy. Uh, make sure you're staying active and recreate responsibly. back at home with your seaweed, it's time to do some pressing. For this, you'll need something to hold water, like a tray, watercolor paper, I've pre-cut some pieces to fit some frames that I have on hand, and then a variety of tools. I like to use things that have a point, honestly a mechanical pencil where you can draw the lead inside and then use that to manipulate the seaweed without leaving any marks, it's pretty handy. I'm also going to try a fork maybe a screwdriver, and even whittled a chopstick. And then of course paint brushes can be useful for those really filamentous branches to manipulate the seaweed and move it just how you like it. And then if you have any thick pieces of seaweed, a knife, or in my case an X-Acto knife, is pretty handy to chop away at some of the thicker bits, which will ensure that our seaweed presses nicely. Sometimes the hardest part about seaweed pressing is choosing which piece of seaweed you want to use. I'm going to start with a nice easy one. We're going to use this nice thick bladed chunk of red eyelet silk kelp. This thick blade is really easy to move around and manipulate, so I can really just lay it on my piece of paper, scooch it, layer it, fold it, and whenever you're satisfied with your composition, you can call it good. And we'll just go ahead and we'll set that off to the side. Grab a new piece of paper. And this time we're going to try some branchy sargassum. So you'll notice we kind of lay that on our piece of paper. This is where I might ooh, try and tease it out with a fork. Okay, I really, I'm really partial to my, to my mechanical pencil here. I'm going to start at the base. And I'm just going to kind of work my way up, arranging those branches. I might actually do a little bit of trimming. <laughs> I'm just gonna knock that right off. So I really want to show off the individual pieces. That's pretty nice. I'm gonna call that good. All right, with the blades and the branches mastered, I think we're ready to move on to a trickier subject. Now, this is a piece of seaweed with filamentous red algae on it. Does not look that impressive. Um, if I were to start branching it out though, it's going to look really cool. But at this point, that would take forever. So here's where the tray actually comes in handy. Because I can fill it with a shallow bit of water. And now when I put that seaweed on, you can give it a little shake. Boom. I'm starting to see some of those really cool details come out um, with this nice red branching algae. Now, I like to use a paintbrush with this really fine stuff because I can kind of just <laughs> basically pet, pet the seaweed, move it around how I like it, and really demonstrate those cool branching patterns of this algae. Now, if I were to just pick this up, I'm gonna have a problem. <gasps> All that hard work washed away. So <laughs> we're going to put our seaweed back in place. And before we pick it up, we're going to kind of let the water slough off the sides because we don't want all that hard work <laughs> to just be washed away. Cool. I'm going to call that good for the sake of this tutorial. Set that aside. So for the bull kelp, you'll notice that these blades are much slimier and on a piece of paper like this currently dry one, it's a little bit trickier to manipulate these blades. They kind of stick together, <laughs> kind of as a mess. So I'm going to add some more water. 
because I want to make it easy for myself to really position these blades in a way that looks really cool. I'm going to clean off some green seaweed that tried to sneak in here. Um, another thing I did is I pre-prepared this seaweed. Uh, the nematocyst here is a really thick part of algae that when you're pressing, um, the blades are going to dry and then this is going to take a lot longer. So what I did is I used our X-Acto knife here and I actually cut away the other half of the bulb there. I'm just going to set that off to the side and this is going to make it so that hopefully when we add something heavy to the top of the seaweed, this is going to squish and it's going to let it dry out a lot faster. So we're going to now take some time to untwist these. Now that your seaweed's all laid out, it's time to do some pressing. For this step, you'll need a hard surface, some towels, something like a pillowcase or bed sheets, really anything with a high fiber count, and some cardboard, as well as something heavy. I'm using some old textbooks. First off, we're gonna start on our hard surface with a layer of towel. This is really gonna help absorb some of the moisture from our seaweed here. I'm gonna lay that first layer down. Make sure nothing's hanging off the edges. Then we're gonna layer that nice pillowcase. Because this fiber is pretty fine, it's not likely where a towel would stick to that seaweed and potentially pull it off the paper. This is less likely to do that, so a bed sheet pillowcase. Good chance to reduce reuse. Lay that down. Next up we're gonna do another layer of towel. Oh, got the Lisa Frank one. I love it. And then a piece of cardboard. From here you're just gonna continue doing layers of towel, seaweed, bed sheet, towel, cardboard until all your pieces are set out good to go and from here we press i'm going to let this press overnight in the morning i'll switch out the towels and pillowcases for dry layers this is really operation get your seaweed flat and dry before it molds thicker pieces will definitely need more time Typically, I'm switching layers for about three days before we're ready to move on to the final step. Once your piece is bone dry, I've been adding a layer of Mod Podge to the seaweed. I'm finding that this helps preserve the algae and keep your art looking good longer. We hope that you enjoyed this seaweed pressing tutorial. Once your creation is complete, please feel free to send a picture of your work to Harbor Wild Watch. We'd love to see what you've created.